internal structure of the earth. internal structure of the earth is nowhere exposed to our direct observation. The internal structure of the earth can be understood by the indirect geophysical data. It is characterized by the geophysical data. The study of seismic waves provides the most important source of information of interior of the earth. The thickness of the earth is 6371 kilometer. This is the thickness from here to here, which is nothing but a radius of the earth. This thickness from 0 kilometers, 6371 kilometers, it is divided into three major divisions which are crust, mantle and the core. This is crust, this is mantle and this is core. Crust, mantle and the core. Let us take one by one. Next is crust. The outermost layer of the earth is called as the crust. It represents less than 1% of its total volume. The thickness of the crust is varied from place to place. Not only the thickness, in addition to that, composition also. From here to here, at the continental region, what is the thickness? 35 kilometers. Already I have told you, the entire internal structure of the earth can be understood on the basis of indirect geophysical data. This crust is varied from place to place in thickness. How? At the oceanic region, if it is the this discontinuity layer, the thickness of the crust is very thin, which is approximately 5 to 6 kilometers in thickness. At the continental region, it attains around 35 to 40 kilometers. At the mountain region, it extends up to 60 to 70 kilometers. <clears throat> At the oceanic region, 
continental region at the mountain region you see at the continental region the thickness of the earth crust extends up to 35 to 40 kilometers what do we find here if it is the oceanic region definitely only the basaltic layer the thick higher denser basaltic rocks layer can be seen at the oceanic layer this layer which is left over that cannot be seen which is formed of at the continental region particularly igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rocks particularly granitic rocks and gneissic rocks that cannot be seen at the oceanic region here the rocks are denser here the rocks are lighter above the denser rocks particularly basaltic rocks we can able to find igneous and metamorphic and sedimentary rocks this crust again divided into two layers upper layer or upper crust and lower crust this is upper crust this one is lower crust this upper crust is always rich with silica and alumina since it is formed of silica and alumina it is described as sial si stands for silica al stands for alumina this lower layer since it is predominantly rich with silica and magnesium we are going to call it as sima the outer crust is called as sial and the inner crust which is called by the name sima yes try si stands for silica al stands for alumina here si stands for silica and ma stands for magnesium sial and sima the composition of the earth crust particularly upper crust and lower crust sial and sima just we have to remember silica and alumina which is called as sial and silica and magnesium which is called as sima there is a discontinuity which is called by the name mohorovicic discontinuity here the layer which separates crust and mantle is called by the name mohorovicic discontinuity here the layer which separates mantle and core is called by the name gutenberg discontinuity the boundary between 
the boundary between the crust and mantle is called by the name Mohorovicic discontinuity. This is the first major discontinuity in the seismic record of the earth, which was first discovered by A. Mohorovicic. in the year 1909, that's why, which is named after him. How the existence of this discontinuity was assumed by A. Mohorovicic? First, we have to think of seismic waves. Basically, there are three kinds of seismic waves. When an earthquake occurs, the seismic waves are generated at the focus. There are three kinds of seismic waves, primary waves, secondary waves and L waves. L waves are confined only to the surface. Primary waves and secondary waves are going to move towards the depth, that's why they are called as body waves. Here, primary waves are also called as P waves. Secondary waves are also called as S waves. At the bottom of the crust, particularly at the lower crust, the velocity of the primary waves attain 5.5 kilometers per second. The velocity of the S waves, which means secondary waves, attain velocity of 3.3 kilometers per second. After this layer, after this discontinuity layer, the velocity of the primary waves attain 7.4 kilometers per second. The velocity of the S waves attain 4.4 kilometers per second. There is a sudden increase after the discontinuity, after certain layers, after this depth, we are going to find the drastic enhancement of the velocities of the primary waves and secondary waves at the uppermost region of the mantle, which is 7.4 of primary waves and 4.4 kilometers per second of secondary waves. Thus, the increasing trend of primary waves from 5.5 kilometers per second to 7.4 kilometers per second from 3.3 kilometers per second to 4.4 kilometer per second denotes there must be different kinds of materials between crust and mantle. Mantle. What is mantle? The layer which lies between crust and core is called by the name mantle. Its upper boundary is marked by Mohorovicic discontinuity and lower boundary is marked by Gutenberg discontinuity. The thickness of the mantle is lesser than the half of the radius of the earth, which is here 
what is the thickness 6371 kilometers less than half of the radius of the earth which is 2900 kilometers again this mantle is divided into two divisions upper mantle and lower mantle here to here the thickness just 1000 kilometers the upper mantle extends from 35 kilometers to 1000 kilometers the lower mantle extends 1000 kilometers to 2000 kilometers the mantle comprises only magnesium iron silica rich minerals and rocks peridotite this is peridotite danite eclogite mantle is composed of peridotite danite eclogite kinds of rocks and pyroxene group of pyroxene group of minerals and olivine minerals olivine is a ultra basic igneous rock which is rich with magnesium iron silica it is basically mono mineral sorry it is appeared in the form of green color olive green color granular habit mineral this danite is a mono mineralic rock which is formed of basically olivine mineral but all the three rocks are rich with magnesium iron silica when we go deeper the iron content is enhanced this uppermost portion of this mantle upper mantle is semi solid in state the velocity of the waves will be decreased at this region that's why it is called by the name lower velocity zone this mantle extends from the depth of 35 kilometers to a depth of 1000 kilometers it is also called by the name asthenosphere this upper mantle extends from 35 kilometers depth to 1000 kilometers depth the lower portion of this mantle upper mantle is solid the upper portion is not solid which is semi solid or plastic in state that's why the velocity of the seismic waves decreases decrease at this region that's why it is called by the name lower velocity zone it is also called by the name asthenosphere asthi according to the greek language no asthi means strength when there is no strength at this region that's why it is also called by the name asthenosphere the density of the material here 2.8 gram per cubic centimeter here 3.2 gram per cubic centimeter 
lower most region of the lower crust the density of the material is 2.8 gram per cubic centimeter uppermost region of the upper mantle it is enhanced up to 3.2 gram per cubic centimeter the sudden enhancement in the density of the material of the earth denotes there must be different kinds of material between crust and mantle again the lower mantle extends from 1000 km depth to 2900 km depth we are moving from outermost layer to the innermost region what about seismic waves after the mantle what do we find there is a another kind of discontinuity the the layer which separates mantle and core is called by the name gutenberg discontinuity this is the second most important discontinuity according to the seismic data the discontinuity which separates mantle and core which is named after b gutenberg in the year 1918 the velocity of the primary waves at this region which means lower most region of the lower mantle attain 13.6 kilometers per second after this material uppermost region of the core the same primary waves attain its velocity 8.1 kilometers per second what happens between crust and mantle the velocity of the seismic waves attain drastic enhancement but here the velocity of the primary waves drastically changed from 13.6 kilometers per second to 8.1 kilometers per second again it denotes there must be different kinds of material between mantle and core what about secondary waves or s yes waves here afterwards these seismic waves do not able to travel across the core why the outermost region of the core is always liquid in state the primary waves can able to travel through the solid liquid and gaseous medium the property of the primary waves the property of the secondary waves that does not able to travel through the liquid medium that's why it does not able to travel s yes, waves are stopped from going deeper into the core the core innermost layer of the earth is called by the name core the existence of the core was discovered by r d hold amp in the year 1906 
this core has been divided into outer core and inner core. Outer core is a liquid in state. This outer core extends from 2,900 kilometers to 5,150 kilometers. The inner core is extends from 5,150 kilometers to 6,371 kilometers. Here, one more thing we have to understand, the density of the material above the Gutenberg discontinuity is 5.7 gram per cubic centimeter. Just beneath the, Mohorov, the Gutenberg discontinuity, the density of the material is enhanced, which is 9.9 .9 gram per cubic centimeter. See, the sudden enhancement in the density of the material at the lowermost region of the mantle is 5.7 gram per cubic centimeter. At the uppermost region of the outer core, which will be enhanced up to 9.9 .9 gram per cubic centimeter that denotes again there must be different kinds of material between mantle and core. But when we come to the core region, the density of the material is enhanced towards the depth, towards this point. This is rich with nickel and iron. In this region, secondary waves disappear that does not able to show its existence because of its liquid state. It is rich with nickel and iron how it can be concluded that has to be understood again. The average density of the core is 12 gram per cubic centimeter. This density is comparable with nickel iron alloy. Hence, the core of our earth can also be assumed to have similar composition. According to the primary seismic waves and secondary seismic waves, through the earth's interior, we are going to find the crust mantle and core. In between the crust and mantle, there is a Mohorovicic discontinuity. Between mantle and core, there is a Gutenberg discontinuity. This crust again divided into Sayal and Saima. This mantle again divided into upper mantle, which is liquid state and lower mantle, which is solid in state. Again, this core has been divided into two divisions, outer core and inner core. Outer core is always, again, liquid in state. That's why the existence of secondary waves we cannot able to find in this region. The inner core is, again, solid in state. The density of the material is 13 0 0.0 gram per cubic centimeter. The average density of the core is 12 gram per cubic centimeter. In the beginning stage, 
of this class, I had used the sentence, internal structure of the earth is nowhere exposed to our direct observation. But here, the internal structure of the earth is exposed to our direct observation, which is on the basis of indirect geophysical data. No one has visited up to this depth. When we go in towards the depth, the temperature and pressure will be enhanced. Thank you.